Hey guys, we're going to be setting up the React Native application today. And then at the end of the video, we're going to be going over uh, MySQL and how you can see what your database looks like with Prisma. This was a suggestion by one of you guys, and I thought it was a great idea. So that's what we'll be doing at the end. So I skipped a few steps here. I already set up Create React Native App, and I set up ESLint. And uh, I'm not going to show how I set up the emulator. Um, but if you're interested in any of those things and you don't know how to do them, I'll put a link in the description below. So when you've done that, so make sure you go ahead and run the Create React Native uh, boilerplate to get to this point. And uh, you can optionally set up ESLint. Uh, you should see your files looking like so on the left. And then you should have an app.js with this stuff here. So first things first, we're going to add uh, Apollo client to this. Uh, which is going to allow us to uh, make GraphQL requests to the Prisma server. And I'm going to create a source folder where we're going to keep all of our code because we don't want to put it all in just app.js. So I'm going to create an index.js file which is going to be basically our home. And then I'm going to create a routes folder which is going to store um, all our components or all our pages. And maybe a better name instead of routes you could call this pages since we are creating a react native app and not a, a website but it'll be okay so now in my app.js i'm actually just going to delete oops and my app.js i don't even know what i just clicked but we're going to delete all this stuff and you notice how we just need to export default something so i'm going to just import app from source and then we're going to export default it export defaults app. So we're not actually going to put any code in the app.js. Everything's going to live in source. Um, we're just going to keep this here to uh, have it. Uh, that's how Create React Native app gets your application. It looks for this app.js file. Okay, so then in our index.js over here is where we're going to set things up. So I'm going to import React from React. Um, and then we could do React Native stuff here and whatnot. But really, we're just going to set up uh, Apollo. So we need to run this over here. So this is the setup guide for Apollo and uh, React. So we're going to copy these. These are the things we need to install. Um, if you want to install things independently, like they said, you can do that too. I'll put a link to this in the description if you want to copy paste this as well. All right, so we're going to say yarn add and run this. Make sure you're running this on the client and not the Prisma server. Um, and then we're going to just set up. So I'm going to export default here. We're going to have a little function. And we're going to import routes from dot slash routes. And we're going to have render our routes tag here. We're going to set that up in a second. But uh, here we need to set up our Apollo client. Okay, so we did that. The next thing we do is uh, point our HTTP link to the server. Um, and then we create a provider like so. So notice how they do new HTTP link and then they put a URI inside of it. We're going to just need to remember that. And we can copy this stuff here. Now ours is slightly different because we're doing this with uh, React Native and not React. So we won't be using this React DOM stuff. But we will be creating a provider like this and we can get rid of that okay so here we need to provide the URL which for us is going to be localhost 4000 and I don't this we might need to change this I don't know for sure if this is the endpoint I don't know like usually when I create the server I have it on like slash GraphQL I think um, how Prisma does it is it's running here and now make sure you don't have this running on uh, the Prisma server, but then this this guy, right? Uh, source index, um, this one. So we're running on localhost 4000. Make sure you point at this server, not the Prisma one that gets set up. Okay. So that's good. We have it pointing at the right location. Um, here we're creating an in memory um, things, and it doesn't like it. I'm assuming it's because. Um, we used this one where we did the Apollo client preset. I've actually never used this preset before. So I'm wondering whether um, 
I want to check out the package.json. I'm assuming Apollo client reset. I'm assuming it just has Apollo client reset reset. I'm guessing it has like Apollo client HP link and in memory cache. Yep, looks like it's the case. Are all inside of this package instead of installing them individually. Okay, so we're setting up our client here and then we are passing a provider. So now we're good to go. So now whenever we want to, we can make GraphQL requests in our components because we have Apollo client set up. And now in our routes, index.js over here, I wanna set up uh, React Router. So this is what we're gonna use for routing. Feel free to change this out with uh, a different solution if you prefer with React Native, but this is my favorite because it works for web and native and it's almost the exact same thing. So we're gonna install this library React Router Native and I'm just gonna be taking the code from the basic example. Um, that's a good start. So yarn add, paste that in. And then we're gonna copy that here and we're gonna import React from React and then we're gonna set this up. So we're gonna export default this and we're gonna set up a native router on the outside and I like to only render one route. So if you only want to render one route, you can have a switch, a switch, which is going to be outside because with React, you can only have one child. At least uh, how native router works is you can't have, for example, this and then have basically there's no divs in React Native, but they don't like this because native router needs to have a single child. Um, in here, and this has two children, right? One, two. So if we wanna put all of our routes, we can put all of our routes inside of switch, but we can't do it. Well, we still have to wrap the switch, but we'll do that in a second. So now we're gonna have our routes, and we can see how they do it here. Um, so they have our routes. The reason we're using switch is only one route gets rendered, and uh, they have a lot of other junk mixed in. We're not going to worry about this stuff until later because this is them actually rendering components and whatnot. But we're going to be doing this. And notice how this looks exactly like the web version if you've used it. It's not letting me copy it. Well, that's okay. Um, where you have a path and you actually set a, a URL path. And we're going to push to that. But they just have a container which they call view. So we're going to get the view from import view from react native okay so we have our switch which selects only one route and then we're going to just have a view which is now going to have all the routes and i think i think i can have i don't know if switch can have multiple routes in it automatically i think it can if we get an error what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll add a view tag around things um, so actually i'm going to move that for now we, we might come back to this i forget how it works but anyway, we're gonna have multiple routes here. So one of them is gonna be uh, sign up. And we can import that from dot slash sign up. And then the other one could be import login. Now we haven't created these kids yet, but we could add them under our route here. So sign up.js and login.js. And we'll fill those in later. Here, I'm going to be using exact, and then uh, we can set the path. And so we're going to say now, normally you would put like, so I'm going to make set the component is equal to sign up. Now, normally you would do like slash sign up as the home page. Um, or sorry, you wouldn't have this as a home page. Normally, I would have like a path slash sign up, right? But I'm actually going to make sign up the home page because that's the first route that I would like our app to go to. Um, and initially, we're going to render on the slash. Okay. Um, and then I'm saying exact because if we get a path like ABC, if you get rid of uh, exact, it'll also render this guy because it's there's a slash and there's a slash here. So exact is important to add. And then we're gonna have a login and we'll have our login. Okay. So this is all I wanted to set up for this video. We have routing and Apollo client all set up. 
what we're going to be doing in the next video, at least with React Native, is uh, filling out a sign up and maybe we'll get to log into and we'll actually make a mutation. Now I want to go over with you guys uh, the Docker stuff. So first off, uh, I already have stuff running. So if I do Docker ls, um, you can see this is the Docker container that's running. So when we told Prisma to deploy our application locally to Docker, we see uh, this is what it creates. So this is the service Prisma sets up, and this is a server that takes our requests. Now they also need a MySQL database, so they spin up a MySQL container. Now we might be interested in, hey, what is going on with this MySQL database? We want to go, might want to go check it out. And there's actually a way for us to do that. So we can run docker exec, uh, and then we do pass uh, .it, and this is, we pass the ID. And then we can specify a command that we want to run on this container. So what I want to run is bash. And the reason why I want to run that is it allows me to run bash commands inside of that container now. Uh, so now I am inside of the MySQL container right here, and I can run commands. I can do an ls, I can see some stuff. And now what I want to do is connect to the MySQL database and check it out. So there is a MySQL command line, which is already installed in the Docker container. So if I run MySQL, but bummer, it's installed, but we had access denied. We don't have a password, so we need a password to get it in. So I found the password, and the password is uh, graphcool. Um, so that allows us to get in and notice how I specified the password with dash p and uh, then I said graph cool like that and uh, Yeah, so there's no space and dash p specifies the password So make sure you do it like that and you should be able to log in I'm sure some of some of you are wondering how did I figure out that the password was graph cool? And I believe this is what your password should be as well on yours so this is something I actually had to go look at uh, the GitHub code for Prisma. Now I knew when setting up a MySQL uh, Docker container, the password you set in the Docker file. So I took a look at their server code and I noticed that there was a Docker and Docker Compose. I first checked out Docker and looked at their Docker file, but there wasn't really anything helpful here. This is where they were setting up, it looked like something with Scala. Um, which is what they use. So I went back and I checked out their Docker Compose um, and saw it looked at their dev.yaml and I noticed BAM! There's their MySQL root password. It's this SQL internal password thing. But I had no idea what that was so I searched this repo see if I could find what the value of that was and here we are. Voila! It had export SQL internal password graph cool so I gave that a try and it worked. So that's how I actually discovered how to get into this guy. Um, next we can do show databases um, and we can see all the different databases that this MySQL instance has inside of it. So I've created a couple different Prisma things so you see there's more than just uh, one. And the one we care about is this guy right here. Um, so we can copy him and now I can say use to connect to it like that. And now I can say show tables. And now we can see all of our tables. And uh, this is the product table that we created in the last video. And I thought this was kind of interesting. You can select all from user, for example. There's actually a user inside of here named Sarah. This is not something I created. This is just came with it by default, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, but anyway, we can. Uh, say describe product Oop, and product is capital P so this is the table that we created right so we see everything here and what I can do is I can come over here to my client and e-commerce database so whenever we make changes here and deploy it it changes stuff over here so for example if I were to delete price and then if I want to see the change over there, and I'm currently in client, so I'm going to go up a folder and then go into uh, e-commerce, and I'm going to say Prisma deploy. And if I do, once this finishes running, we're going to have a price dropped from our database, right? Deleted a field price. So now we see price here. If I were to describe again, we notice how the price is gone. So it did indeed affect the database and change the schema for product. 
Um, and of course we want to keep price there so I'm going to add it back and run Prisma deploy again and it'll affect the database. So pretty cool. So you can actually access the database in this way to come check it out and query it if you wanted to. So you just need to connect to your Docker container, grab the ID, and then get into the MySQL database like so. So now we can do describe the product and we notice how price is back. Um, so perfect. So we were able to affect our database and it did indeed affect the Docker container in MySQL. But that's it for this video guys. I hope that was helpful and you can kind of see it actually does do things. Um, and in the next video we'll continue on with our React Native application and creating the sign up page.